<laughs> he needs to come in. And um, you were speaking about the principle of, look, uh, all is fair in love and war. Uh, not that they should go and destabilize, though, but if they can't get their house in order and it's going to work to the advantage of uh, anybody else, um, I, I guess uh, so be it. But um, I don't know. You, 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 you made the statement that, look, a criminal matter must indeed be pursued if there is any substance to it so that you can't just leave it um, hanging uh, there. Um, but the way he is speaking, I don't know, Gib, what is your assessment? How, how destabilizing is this? Because um, it looks like the Labour Party is battling for its soul, as a matter of fact, if it's going to do anything useful or substantial uh, politically. It needs, the party needs to form alliances, I imagine. And um, they have done that to some extent, but now that is being held against them by, you know, PDP, the part that PDP is playing, and you just heard Mr. Rabambi even mention APC itself too. You know, I think much of public relations um, experience is needed here now because public relations is a deliberate, planned, and sustained effort to create mutual understanding between stakeholders. So you need to be deliberate about it. And what is expected is that the party stakeholders should synchronize. Mm -hmm. So the expression factionalization itself means there are divisions. Of there. course. And let me say this. Going by the last general elections in Nigeria, the obedient movement was like a landslide seeking for somewhere to manifest. That is a grouping, even though it is Labour Party. Exactly. But it's a grouping under it Labour It represented Party. an interest. And I think Obi himself has said that it is not necessarily Labour Party like exactly. that. Exactly. Obi came Party like from that. PDP. Yes. Because he couldn't have his way. Mm -hmm. He did not start in PDP as a politician. And so we need to also create space for the aspect of personal ambition in politics. In fact, Obi is already saying now that what Jesus says is that go and try to help them. If they don't listen to you, dust your, your feet <laughs> and move on. So as a politician who has ambition, he's already insinuating that if Labour Party cannot synchronize, he's at liberty to move. Already we are reading about the former governor of Kaduna State, El Rufai, romancing SDP. You know politicians for who they are. So it's now for um, Labour Party to conduct what we call SWOT analysis. It's not only Labour Party that should conduct SWOT analysis. Let me inform the party that your opponents also are conducting their own SWOT analysis and they will leverage on your weakness to pull you down. The, if you don't the, quickly leverage on your strength, strength, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, exactly, and threats. Strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. So this threat now that is coming, you need to, to work around it. If not, you, you find that the kind of influence that Labour Party enjoyed during the last general elections in Nigeria may not be there. You know, so this and, is... And, and a, a large part of that perhaps is um, the obedience factor, you know, and that is what, um, as you've just explained, uh, Peter Obi is sort of saying that, look, you, all of it is insinuating, but the man has been on the move. He's been traveling, he's been moving around, uh, and I think the, there's this notion that if things can't work out here, even though he hopes it will, I would imagine, I'm not in his mind, yeah. uh, then uh, if, if, if he moves, he's probably thinking that I will be moving with my loyalists. Yes, and that is why the concept of structure that some of us spoke so much about is relevant. As much as Peter Obi has his loyalist, there is a need for a structure. The Labour Party is a structure. And if that structure becomes like a structure with deflated tires that cannot move, he needs another structure. And this is where politics has come to play. And of course, in politics, it's negotiation. He, he rightly mentioned that some offerings are being made behind the curtains. That is politics for you. That you, what it will take you 10 years to achieve in that party, can we offer you in four years? So what do you do for us? 
So, and that is why the frontliners in Labour Party should come together now and sit down to find out whether they are mortgaging the future of Labour Party or securing the future of Labour Party and ask the simple question, what kind of interests are we projecting? Is it national? Is it party? Is it individual? Because it goes a long way. Indeed. Because fact, politicians yeah. who have made their marks can always move from one party to another. And if they are strong enough, they will. look at what happened to PDP in the last general elections. The G5 just came out, the governors, and said, fine, we are still in this party, but we will only be loyal to a candidate in another party. And we have brought that as a culture we, to we, the politics of Nigeria now. We, because even the PDP chieftain, who was like the arrowhead of that movement, is now a serving minister in another party and still holding the ticket of PDP. So there are strange things. Or do I say <laughs> family? <laughs> well, what, uh, unusual events happening within the political landscape in Nigeria. So that, that nevertheless the, the are still not walk on Nigeria. slippery ground at this point in time. Okay, let's take a break now. We'll come back, continue with this conversation. And I'll